nice place, Amy. Yes. The service is extremely good. Is it? That ashtray has been changed twice since we've been here. And just look around. Look at the, oh, the unbridled luxury. I still like the San Remo. Oh, so do I, Amy. So do I. There's very little to choose between them, really. But the Don Carlos Marbella has one definite advantage. What's that? It's open over Christmas. Why is that an advantage? Well, it's an advantage for anyone who wants to stay over Christmas. Yes, I suppose so. It's certainly an advantage for Carlos. He works here over Christmas. So we'd certainly feel at home. But we won't be here. No, but if we were here, we'd feel at home. If we stayed over Christmas. But we're not. We're going home. Right. Be nice, though. Christmas? Why do you want to stay here for Christmas? David, we'd be bored. There'd be nothing to do. Well, that's the point. We'd be able to relax, get away from it all. I've been looking at you, Amy. Have you? Yes. I wish I'd known. I'd have had my hair done. I don't think you've quite picked up yet. Picked up yet? To tell the truth, when you came, you looked a bit... frazzled. Frazzled? And who frazzled me, David? I think a few more days would make all the difference to get away from the stress and strain of Christmas. All that, oh, cooking, cleaning, entertaining. But I love Christmas. I love the cards and the presents and the games. If you love it so much, why did I find you at 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve with your head in the oven? I was checking the turkey. You were in tears? I was in tears because Uncle Morris had just fallen down and cut his head open. It was that every Christmas, Amy. No, that was strain. A few more days and do you go? What about the children? They're at your mother's. And the presents? They're in the wardrobe. I see. So you want me to ring them up and tell them, we're not coming home for Christmas and your presents are in the wardrobe. What sort of a father are you? They can manage. Manage? Come on. Where are we going? We're going to find a telephone. I want to hear you tell them that. Tell them that you won't be home for Christmas. I want you to hear the heartbreak in the voices. Can I speak to the children, please? Go on, David. Show them what sort of a father you are. Break their hearts. They're not there. What? They've gone away for Christmas. Staying with those friends I met in Portugal. Well, didn't they leave a message? Yes, our presents are in the wardrobe, so it's all right, Amy. All right? What about my mother? Mother? I can't leave my mother all on her own at Christmas. She'd be miserable. Let me speak to my mother, David. She's not there either. She's spending Christmas with that man she met at the over-60s. Well, then who are you talking to? The woman next door. She, she's watering the plants. What about the dog? Well, you don't want to speak to him. Do you? Of course I don't, David. You can tell him. Tell him what? That we won't be home for Christmas. He doesn't know it's Christmas. Of course he does. And he knows he's been abandoned. Speak to him, David. At least the sound of your voice might reassure him. <sighs> Hello. Could I speak to Dodger, please? Yes. She's bringing him to the farm. Oh, I can hear him panting. <laughs> Hello, Dodger. It's David. David Pierce. I'm just ringing to let you know that we won't be home for Christmas, but we'll be back in the new... Hello? Hello? I think he's wrong off. I'm not surprised. He never did like you. Why don't you face it, Emma? We're not needed. Christmas won't be the same without the children, David. Your fledglings have left the nest, Emma. The time has come to spread their wings. You have to know when to let go. But... David! And how long has it been since we had Christmas together? Just the two of us. Just the two of us? Right. I wonder if we can get a room. We've got one, Amy. I booked it this morning. I'll just get the cases.
I hope we're not going to regret this, darling. Of course we won't regret it. You didn't want to go home, Robert. You hate Christmas. Oh, well you said you wanted to get away from it all. Yes, but are we? I tell you, I distinctly saw tinsel in reception and balloons. Mark my words, you won't be long before they're dragging a tree down here. No, they don't really celebrate Christmas. No, don't they? <laughs> Hear that? What? Laughter. It started already. They'll soon be running around in funny hats, playing games, asking us to wrap each other up in lavatory paper. I'm sure they won't, Robert. The Don Carlos Marbella is a very respectable hotel. Everyone looks most sedate. Yes, they may look sedate now, darling, but Christmas changes people. You wait until you get some beer-swilling German wassailing under your window. I wish you didn't hate Christmas quite so much. Aren't you forgetting something, darling? I lost my mother at Christmas. I know, I'm sorry. One moment, sitting there, eating a mince pie, and next moment, gone. I know. Do you think I can forget something like that? Do you think I could possibly enjoy Christmas after what happened? Don't you think it brings back bitter memories? Yes, I'm sure it does, Robert. I haven't been able to face a mince pie since. My mother was a saint, Linda. Well, she is now, Robert. At least it was mercifully quick. May have been mercifully quick, but he certainly put the tin lid on Christmas. You try getting an undertaker at that time of year. I told him death doesn't take a holiday. Do you know what he said? Death may not. I do. He wouldn't have cared if she'd sat there all Christmas. Well, they came in the end, Robert. Yes, came in the end. Do you know he had the gall to wish me a Merry Christmas? Well, I'll just let anyone round here try wishing me a Merry Christmas. I need a drink. Merry Christmas, Robert. Merry Christmas. There, uh, take the cases up. I, I thought we'd have a drink before lunch. I think we're going to need it. Why? Well, it's a bit dead, David. It's not dead. It's more restrained, that's all. This hotel caters for a very superior class of people. Then what are we doing here? That, shh. I mean, they're more travelled, sophisticated, laid back. Laid back? Some of them are horizontal. That couple over there look like they've been embalmed. I don't fancy spending Christmas with them, David. There's not much chance of a knees up there. A knees up? Where do you think you are? These people come here to relax. They lead hectic lives under stress and strain. Try pulling a cracker in here. You could put somebody in intensive care. Oh, <laughs> bonus dias, Carlos. Senor Peace. Oh. <laughs> At least he's glad to see us. I know why it's so quiet, David. There's no children. Oh, they don't encourage children in the bar. Oh, but Christmas is a time for children. Now, don't start getting broody, Amy. We came here to enjoy ourselves. You're right. We've got each other. <laughs> Who needs people? It only takes two to pull a cracker. Merry Christmas, Amy. Merry Christmas, Linda. No. Lovely room. Is it? And our own for Jamie? Yes. And have you seen the bathroom? Just look. Manicure set, sewing kit, herbal body lotion. The last word in luxury. And look, look. This toilet has been sanitised for your protection. You'll have a job getting around that, David. You remove it before you, Sammy. You don't appreciate it, do you? I'm not thinking of spending all Christmas on that, David. What's the matter? Did you know that she was going to be here? No, it was a complete surprise. Of course, it uh, does present us with a problem. It certainly does. What problem? We'll have to buy them a present. Why? Because they'll buy us one. How do you know? They're those sort of people. We're in a different league now, Amy. These people buy presents. All right. I saw something nice in the gift shop. A bear holding a thimble. A bear holding a thimble? Why don't you get in the lighthouse with an egg timer stuck on it and be done with it? No, that's a good idea. I mean, these are people with taste. We can't buy them bric-a-brac. Taste? 
What do you know about taste? The last present you bought me was a ship's wheel with a plastic fish in it. Oh, I see. I've no taste. Well, what do you think of this? Dave, it's lovely. Yes. The kissing. Yes. I've got no clothes on. Well, it's Adam and Eve, Amy. Oh, Dave, it's lovely. Do you think she'd like it? Who? Linda. Linda? And Robert. But, David, it must be ever so expensive. We don't want them to think we're cheap. Don't we? We've never been cheap, Amy. No, I can see that. You've left the price on the bottom. My God! Oh, I better rub that off. No, leave it on, then they'll know we're not cheap. What's the matter now? Well, it certainly puts the ship's wheel in the shade, doesn't it, David? What are you getting at? Where's my present? Your present? Here! This apartment for Christmas, the height of luxury. Is that all? Well, most women will be ecstatic, but not you. You've done nothing but more since you got here. It's time you started to enjoy yourself. We came here for a good time. Right. You want a good time? You're going to get it. Don't look so morose, Robert. And don't drink too much before dinner. I think he's following us. <laughs> Nonsense. I thought I'd lost him. I told him we were going to marry a cash. There you are, you see. He didn't know we'd be here. He could think you were following him. Follow David? I'm not a masochist. Don't worry, Robert. This is a large hotel. You can easily avoid him. Avoid him? <laughs> He'll be there every time I open a door. I've had less trouble with double blazing salesmen. At least they don't come out of the wardrobe. No, no. I'll just have to face the fact that he's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Robert, will you forget about David for a moment? This is a very exclusive hotel. You'll meet lots of interesting and sophisticated people. Now, there won't be much chance of meeting interesting and sophisticated people with David following me in his ten-year-old safari suit. It's Amy you've got to worry about. She'll probably wear a kiss-me-quick hat and do the hokey-cokey. Oh, Lord, do think so. Oh, she's probably the sort of person who uses Christmas as an excuse for horseplay. So we must make sure we keep her away from the Stonely Jacksons. Stanley Jacksons. Over there. Remember? We met them at the Hunt Ball last year. Very old family. Now don't wave, Robert. We're not on a coach trip. The Stanley Jacksons don't respond to waves. Go over and introduce yourself. What should I say? Say we met them at the Hunt Ball last year, that you're here with your wife, Linda, and perhaps they'd like to have a drink with us later. What if they ignore me? Of course they won't ignore you. They ignored me at the Hunt Ball. 
This is different. Go on, introduce yourself before someone beats you to it. Right. Stop fingering your colour. Good evening. Ah, oh, do you think we could have a table near the window? What? No, uh, you don't understand. My name's Cochrane. We met at the ball hunt last year. I'm here with my wife, Drink, and we wondered if you'd like to have a Linda with us later. I beg your pardon. Oh, Linda. Oh, David. Where's Robert? He's over there, talking to the Stoney Jacksons. Stoney Jacksons? He's a herald extraordinary. Pardon? And she's terribly aristocratic. Oh, yes, I can see that. I can tell by the cheekbones, Linda. She has so much breeding. And it shows. Of course, you get a very superior class of person here. Yes. It should be a very civilised Christmas. At least there won't be any horseplay. I abhor horseplay, Linda. So does Robert. He hasn't very happy memories of the festive season, I'm afraid. He was orphaned at Christmas. Oh? Was he very young? It was last year, David. But then we always spend Christmas very simply. Oh, so do we. I try to recapture the old spirit of Christmas. It's become lost somewhere, Linda. It's become too commercialised. I like to get back to the old values. Church in the morning. Perhaps a few baskets of fruit for the old people. A brisk walk across the common with the dog. A modest meal. I think overeating is obscene at Christmas, Linda. And then in the evening, I sit. Uh, possibly over a glass of brandy and reflect on the past year and the challenge to come. It's a very meaningful way to spend the day, David. We take our pleasures very quietly, Linda. Oh, no. Miss Lind, what's the matter? Do you realise what you've just done? You've just insulted the Stoney Jacksons. Oh, do you mean that man over there with a face like a well-kept grave? He hasn't got a face like a well-kept grave. He's terribly aristocratic and she's an honourable. Can't you see the breeding? Yeah, she looks like a horse. What? Oh, love, you've forgotten your paper hat. <laughs> what did they say, Robert? They were looking forward to a restful Christmas. She's had shingles. But what did I tell you? There's not much chance of a knees up there, David. A knees up? But David said you always enjoyed a quiet Christmas. Quiet? David? You should see him on Christmas night, singing Mule Train and banging his head with a tea tray. Good Lord. Well, Robert and I don't really celebrate Christmas. Oh, what a pity. Because we've got you a present. A present for me? Hey, Amy, I, I was going to give this to Linda later. Linda? Just a little something I saw in the gift shop, and I thought of you instantly. Uh, and... Robert. Oh, this is terribly embarrassing, David. I haven't bought you anything. What did I tell you? Linda, we don't give to receive. It was so you, I had to buy it. And I want you to have it. Oh, this is exciting. Now, what is it? A little house. What? Not just a little house, Linda. When it's fine, that little woman comes out. I think that's you. And when it's threatening, that little man comes out. That must be you, Robert. Good Lord. How fascinating. We've never had one of these before, have we, Robert? No. Thank you. It wasn't our first choice. It certainly wasn't. No. We tried to get you a ship's wheel with a plastic fish in it, but they sold out. Amy. And now I really must go and arrange the carol singing. The children are singing carols on the terrace after dinner. Oh, how sweet. Oh, that's not all. While they're singing, and they don't know this, do you know who's going to come out from behind the bushes? Father Christmas, riding on a donkey and carrying presents. Father Christmas doesn't have a donkey, he has reindeer. 
You don't get reindeers in Spain. We've got a donkey. Oh, well, all you need now is some poor Mott to be Father Christmas. We've got one, David. Oh. You. children. Um, now let's start it again. Little donkey. And this time I'm sure you're all going to get a big surprise. Ready? Little donkey, little donkey, on the dusty road. Hold him. Senor. Oh. I don't suppose any way of lowering the seat. Senor. Well, why did it have to be so big? To carry you, senor. Oh, come on, look, I'm getting late. That's three times of some little donkey. Senor, senor you could, maybe you could spring on him. What do you think? I'm the lone ranger. Spring on him. I'm not getting a hernia, even if it is Christmas. Now, just help me. Just si, hold him. Si, senor. Right. I... I'm sure no one... Oh, it's a very poor... Hi, mommy. Very good. Very good. Very good. Oh, I might have known that he won't move. I talked to him, senor, eh? And while you're at it, tell him if there's any trouble, I'll use his ears as handlebars. Sí, señor. Mira, burrito. Que tingue te va a coger las orejas como handlebars. Sí, sí, hombre. Oh. Getting through are you, Carlos? Sí, señor. Señor. Arre, burro. Right. Burrito. Anda. Anda. Burro. Burro. No. Uy, 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 uy. David. Well, I just hope you're satisfied, that's all. It wasn't my fault. All I asked you to do was ride on a donkey. I didn't ask you to do stunts. Why do you have to show off all the time? I wasn't showing off. I didn't do it on purpose. That donkey went berserk. And it was all your fault. I can never face those people again. What about me? Your language, David. You completely disillusioned those children. You did it deliberately, like switching those presents. Anything to make me look a fool. You don't need any help from me, David. What? Why did we come here? Well, I've told you, a few days here, and well, you feel like a new woman. Well, it certainly worked for you. You've been feeling like a new woman ever since you got here. Oh, rubbish. That's why you were so annoyed when you fell off that donkey, because Linda saw you. Not just Linda. The Stonely Jacksons were there. It was a hell of an extraordinary. I don't care how extraordinary it is. Stonely Jacksons. Just because they've got two names, what's so special about that? Because, Amy, when two powerful families intermarry, the wife often retains her maiden name. Well, I could have retained my maiden name. Your name was Boggs, Amy. You were glad to get rid of it. Besides, their families go back for centuries. Well, so does mine. How do you think we got here? Spaceship? Ah, oh, but they can trace theirs. I could trace mine if I wanted to. You can't even trace your father when he's still alive. Don't you talk about my father like that. I'm not going to. Where are you going? To return this outfit, I never want to see it again. Why, it's Father Christmas. Are you alone, little girl? Yes. What do you want? No. It's what you want, my dear. Come and sit on Santa's knee and tell me what you'd like for Christmas. Well, what I'd like... Whisper in Santa's ear. Are you sure? Yes. Only I don't get many requests for that. Well, I've never kissed anyone with a beard before. Neither have I. Darling! What? I thought he was drinking with the Stoney Jacksons. He must have come back. Linda! He'll be furious if he finds you in here. Quick, in the wardrobe. Linda! What are you doing? 
hanging up my jacket. No, I'll do that. Yes, Rob? Are you breathing? Of course I'm breathing. I'm not dead. No, I mean heavily. I don't know if it's heavy, Robert. I'm not listening to it. Someone's breathing. Perhaps it's you. No, I'm not breathing. This is more rasping. It's like a worn-out pair of bellows. There's someone in the room, darling. <laughs> Nonsense. It's coming from the wardrobe. Well, perhaps it's Father Christmas. <laughs> This is no time for jokes, Linda. When I shout, turn on the lights. Linda, ah! lights! There you are, you see. No one there at all. It was just your imagination, Robert. wasn't very loud. It's quite loud enough, isn't it? We should have pulled them both together. Then we'd have had a louder bang. I didn't want a louder bang. What did you get, Robert? A little water pistol. You should have some fun with that, Robert. Yes. Hey, this is good. Listen to this. What is the difference between a riddle and two elephants sitting on a bun? No idea. Well, go on, think. I am thinking. Linda. I don't know. Robert, a riddle and two elephants sitting on a bun. I give up. You'll kick yourself when you know. One's a conundrum and the other's a bonundrum. You get it? It's a bonundrum. Oh, I must remember that for the party. Party? What party? Oh, we always have a party at Christmas. Do you know we had 60 people in our front room last year? We started off with 30, but David did a conger in the White Swan and brought 30 more back. We can't have a party in our apartment. It's out of the question. It's too late. I've invited everybody. What? Well, everybody that is except the Stoney Jacksons. I mean, we don't want them putting the mockers on it. The mockers? Yes, so keep it quiet, because if they get to know, they'll only gate crash. I shouldn't worry, Amy. I'm sure Stanley Jackson's above that sort of thing. I think he's above everything. He's beyond gravitational pull. Anyway, keep it quiet. 8.30 for 9. Yes, well, uh, I don't know, Amy. I... Robert doesn't celebrate Christmas. Oh, we do. <gasps> Presents under the tree. Sugar mice and oranges in the stocking. Silver coins in the pudding. Well, that's a custom I'm glad to have left behind. Almost broke a tooth last year. You haven't left it behind, David. I put a peseta in your pudding. You've done what? I could have choked. Yes, Amy, I think that's a very silly and dangerous thing to do. You better watch out for yours then, Linda. You put something in mine? But there's nothing here. Oh, dear. Robert, I'm going to my room. I have a migraine. Um, uh, Linda. Don't forget, 8.30. What did you do that for? Just a little harmless Christmas fun. Any harmless Christmas wish. Gracias. Buenas suerte, señora. And what's he brought that for? Because I asked him to. We always pull a wishbone at Christmas time. Now, come on. You win every year, don't you? Just luck. It's the way you pull them. Well, come on, then. Shut your eyes and make a wish, but don't tell me or it won't come true. I know. So don't tell me. I won't. You could tell me what you wished for last year. No, I can't. Why not? Because I'm wishing for the same thing this year. You didn't get it then, eh, David? No. David. Hello, Linda. I thought I recognized that tune, played in your own inimitable style. What strange chance brought you to this place, David? Fate, Linda. How unfathomable the workings of destiny. Is Amy with you? 
No, she's left me. She went off with Aubrey Broadbent, the butcher. I'm sorry. De la vie, Linda. Robert? A climbing accident. So it's just you and me, Linda. Oh, David. It didn't work then, David. How do you know? I'm still here. There, now that's better. What are you doing? Removing a few light bulbs. What for? It's too bright in here. If we're going to have this party, let's do it properly. Subdued lighting is essential. We don't have subdued lighting at home. But well, this is different. These are sophisticated people that expect subdued lighting. It helps them to relax. There'll be subdued lighting, soft music. Oh, and the low hum of conversation. There'll be the low hum of snoring if you leave them in the dark. No, they won't, because there'll be stimulating conversation. What do you mean you're going to sit around and talk all night? Not just talk. There'll be uh, witty exchanges, repartees, bon mots, amusing sallies, interesting anecdotes. What are you going to be doing then? Joining in. Mm, is that all? It sounds boring. Oh, well, they'll be dancing. Oh, God, we can have a conga. There'll be no conga, hokey cokey, or pally glide. It'll be cheek to cheek dancing. That reminds me, where's the mistletoe? You found some mistletoe? <laughs> oh, yes. Now, where's the best place for it? By the door when they come in? No. Over by the drinks table? No. Somewhere where the lighting's more discreet. Ah! There. That should do it. Amy? What? Come here. Come here. And stand under the mistletoe. All right, David. Well? Yes, that should be about the right height. Amy, what's this doing here? Uh, it's for the party. It's a game. Uh, it's the chair of truth, isn't it, Amy? Yes. We're not playing that? Oh, why not? Because it's in very bad taste. No, it's not. It's cheap and vulgar and it's embarrassing and offensive. It's fun, though. Look, these are cultivated, sensitive people. They don't play games. But we always have a few games. Oh, you mean like last year when you blindfolded Aunt May and asked her to identify Uncle Bert by feeling his features? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, and when she got to his eye, you stuck a finger in an egg cup full of jelly and she fainted. Well, we won't play that one. We won't play anything. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go and mix a few dry martinis. Do you know how? Of course I know how. That's just the beginning. The screwdrivers, sidecars, Harvey Wallbangers. Huh. I'm ready for anything. You usually just bung it all in a bowl and float fruit in it. Ah, well, not tonight. You're going to a lot of trouble. But we want people to come, don't we? That's all these Stoney Jacksons having a party tonight. I didn't know that. They must have invited a lot of people. They haven't invited us. Well, we didn't invite them. No, but they're boring. If I'd been them, I'd have invited us. Well, they didn't. I know why they're having a party. It's the only way they'll get an invitation to one. Oh, it'll be so boring. Nobody will go. They made a mistake having a party the same night as us. Yeah, we've always had good parties. Best on the road, David. Yeah. <laughs> they've had a room. So what? And they've got waiter service. A waiter service doesn't make a party, David. And they've got a pianist. A pianist? A pianist doesn't make a party, David. Do you know why? Do you know what makes a party? Fun, laughter, atmosphere. And one other thing, Amy. What? Guess, look, it's getting late. You don't think that... No. <laughs> they wouldn't prefer the Stoney Jackson's party to ours. No. What did I tell you? Here's the first. Come on. Good evening, Senora. Your eyes, senor. Oh, gracias, Carlos. Oh, don't go, Carlos. Oh, 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 no, no, I'm a very happy, senor. Oh, it's Christmas. Have a Chris. No, 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 no. no. What about it, darling? No, 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 no. Oh. I'm just going to serve drink to this Johnny Lady Jackson party. There's no hurry. There won't be anybody there. It's crowded, senora. Is it? You know what this means. They prefer their party to ours. No! They're going on. Going on? To us. Everybody always goes to the worst party first, and then they say, no, we won't have another drink because we're going on. They'll have a few drinks, they'll get incredibly bored, and then they'll come on to us. What did I tell you? 
Oh, Robert, Linda, come in, come in, come in, come in. Oh, um, are we early? No. Yes, but that doesn't matter. You're here before the rush. Have a twiglet, Robert. Let me take your shawl in there. Oh, thank you, dear. And, oh, don't, don't, don't stand on the threshold. Just rub it in. Uh, let me get you a drink. What about a vodka martini? Very dry. Lovely. Olive. Thank you. And you, Robert, anything you like, you name it, we've got it. Pink gin. We haven't got that. Ah. Gin and tonic, if you have any ice. Gin and tonic, on the rocks. Here we are. Droids, David. <laughs> Not many people here yet. Oh, just you wait, Robert. They'll be hanging from the rafters by midnight. Of course, the Stonely Jacksons are holding a party. <sighs> Call that a party. Well, they're putting on a buffet. Putting on a buffet. So what? That doesn't make it a party. They'll have something to eat and then they'll come on here. And do you know why? Because... We've got atmosphere. Right. The only way they'll keep them there is by locking the doors. Don't go, Carlos. Have another. He's dodging the Stonely Jackson's party. He knows how boring it's going to be. <laughs> well, come on. What? Well, let, let's talk. Extremely mild evening. Yes, they're in their shirt sleeves on the terrace. On Christmas Day. Incredible. They say it's warmer than last year. Hmm. But not as warm as the year before. <laughs> well, that was exceptional. Hey. Is that it? What? Well, I thought we were going to have witty exchanges and repartee. I know. What about a tongue twister? Pardon? Let's see if you can say this. If a gumball could boil oil, how much oil could a gumball boil if a gumball could boil oil? Now, I've got it. Don't interrupt. If a gumball could boil oil, how much oil could a goil bum boil oil? Wrong. No, it wasn't. You said goil bum. I did not. See, si. And what do you know about it, my fine Spanish friend? You couldn't get past the first line. It is his second language, Robert. Say it in Spanish, Carlos. Si, señora, si. Si un gran lancia podría guisar grasa, cuánta grasa podría guisar un gran lancia? Si podría guisar grasa. That's very good. Well, how do you know he got it right? He could have been saying anything. I'll have one more shot. You've been doing it for an hour, Robert. It is not Easy, darling. Of course it is. If a gumball could boil oil, how much oil could a gumball boil if a gumball could boil oil? Oh, brilliant, Linda. Well, I've always been nimble of tongue, David. It's just that I find it all rather trivial. Then let's play the chair of truth game. No, I may. If she looks at that watch one more time, I'll kill her. Of course, if Linda doesn't want to play... The chair of truth? Yes. <laughs> just looks like an ordinary chair with a towel thrown over it, Amy. Ah, but it's not an ordinary chair, Linda. It seeks out the truth. If you answer a question dishonestly and sit in that chair, that chair will find you out. Like a lie detector. <laughs> Nonsense. Of course, if Linda finds the truth difficult. No, I don't mind being a sport. No, I've heard that, Linda. Right, come along. Stand in front of the chair. Well, do we have to do this? Linda doesn't mind taking part in an interesting paranormal experiment. It's better than tongue twisters. Now then. We'll start with a simple question first, just to make sure you're on the correct wavelength. Um, what is the last thing you do before you go to sleep at night? The last thing I do? Yes. I clean my teeth. You sure? Think carefully. The chair will know if you're not telling the truth. I have a glass of water. Is that all? It's important we have the complete truth. Sometimes I say a little prayer. A little prayer. How nice. Isn't that nice? Now, are you sure that's all? Yes. Right. Are you listening, Chair? What is the last thing Linda does before she goes to sleep at night? The truth. <laughs> 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 
It's a sponge. It's under the cushion and it runs into a bowl. <laughs> it's just a scream. Oh, it always works. What's the matter, Linda? You're not laughing. Well, I'm glad you find it amusing, Amy. I'm afraid I find it all rather childish. Robert? Robert, are you smirking? No, dear. Well, it's been most enjoyable, David, but I'm afraid my migraines return, so if you'll excuse us. Robert? <laughs> Lovely party, Amy. <laughs> Robert? Belinda. Good night, David. <sighs> Just don't feel proud of yourself. I told you not to play that game. I thought it went very well. Then why did Linda leave? Perhaps she thought I might ask her the truth about some other things. What things? I saw you trying to get her under the mistletoe. No, I wasn't. Linda left because she was disgusted. Just because it's Christmas, there's no need to lose our dignity. Well, you won't lose yours, David. You've been standing on it all week. Oh, have I? Well, now he's gone. Doesn't that tell you something? Why are we having a party without any guests, Amy? Because they're all at the Stonely Jackson. Ah, well, the dreadful truth is, this isn't the party that people go on to. This is the party people go on from. I shouldn't take it personally, David. I'm not. It's you they're avoiding. Me? Yes, you with your, your dotty games and your silly hats. You're so unsophisticated, Amy. Oh. I've come back for a little shawl. It's over there. All alone? Yeah. By the way, I've got it. Have you? I got it going down the corridor. Good. Listen. If a gun boil could boil oil, how much oil could a gun boil boil if a gun boil could boil oil? Word perfect. <laughs> Is there a prize? No. Oh, well, there ought to be. I know. Come here, Amy. Come here. Where you stand there? Cry at Christmas, Robert. Well, never mind. So do I. <laughs> uh, well. Off to the Stoney Jacksons, Robert. What? Good Lord, no, I can't stand the man. Every time he looks at me, my collar starts to prickle. That's funny, so does mine. <laughs> you know, this would have been a much better party if only there'd been a few more guests. We could get some, Robert. No, they won't. Stanley Jacksons. Then we'll hijack it. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Mrs. Cochran? Oh, please, Sir Geoffrey. Linda. Linda? Oh, yes. So kind of you to ask us. It's a fabulous party. Yes, I think it is rather successful. We have one most years, you know, a few friends from along the coast. Some people from the hotel. We try to keep it fairly exclusive. Oh, I do agree. Try to avoid the tripper element as far as possible. There really are some quite dreadful people here this year. I have noticed. That's why we hire a private room, try to keep out the riffraff. <laughs> Though it is amazing how some of these interlopers manage to get in. Why, it's dear David. David. Awfully good value. How clever of you to ask him. Excuse me. Linda, I thought I'd find you here. David, you shouldn't be here. Neither should you. You're supposed to be having a migraine. Why didn't you tell me you were coming? Or do you think this place is too good for me? Don't be a fool, David. And dance with me. Dance with you? I've been wanting to do that all night. Ever since I heard the music. Pulses have been racing, Linda. Oh, David, let's lose ourselves in the music. Whirl me away to the gates of ecstasy. Right. I lead with the left foot. Hear that, Linda? Down by the shore, an orchestra's playing. Bringing back a memory evergreen. Should we begin the begin? You dance divinely, David. I'm a gold medalist, Linda. I should have known. So graceful. Come, Linda. 
Let's go down to the sea and dance as the waves dance. Oh dear. It's Carlos. What? He's watching us. Look, we've got to get out of here. I must be alone with you, Linda. Yes, but where? We'll find somewhere. You're right. Let's gamble all on one final throw. Oh, Linda. I must have a morsel of something before we go. I feel rather faint. Of course. Yes, and perhaps a row. Oh, the quiche looks nice. <laughs> Possibly some potato salad. Ah, now, what about a drumstick? You sure that's enough? Well, get something for yourself, David. I don't want to eat alone. Now, come over by the window. It's cool. Linda, we must hurry. We must get away before it's too late. David, don't give yourself indigestion. Oh, I can't wait to be long with you, Linda. David, it's Amy and Robert. Hello, Linda. How's the me grain? Oh, it's much better, thank you. Um, Robert, do come and meet Lady Stonely Jackson. Emmy? Rat? What'd you come with that for? Only rats leave a sinking ship. I heard the music and just popped in to see what it was like. It can't be much of a party if they let you in. It's a very good party. Call this a party? You should see the one in 209. They're going ape in there. This isn't a party. There's no atmosphere. My name is Stonely Jackson. I don't think we've been introduced. Well, not introduced, uh, exactly. Only I'm hosting this party and attendance is strictly by invitation. May I ask if you've been invited? Well, when you say invited, not exactly invited. We gate crashing. Amy. Then you won't be offended if I ask you to leave. Well, you won't offend him. He's been thrown out to better places than this. If you would just leave quietly... We'll leave, but we won't leave quietly. Now, Amy. Hey, what about a conga? What are you doing? think you're doing, David? The conga, Robert. The conga was over 20 minutes ago, David. Was it? Well, nobody told me. 
Where are the others? The others? Oh, well, they were there a minute ago. Conga. <laughs> 